Hello everyone, I was recently asked if I actually like the Ogre lore uh, in Warhammer Fantasy, not Trek. So, yes. I mean, this is an army that I'm playing. This is an army that I'm uh, choosing over Lizardmen. And I, I do adore Lizardmen. And the Empire, and pretty much everything else. But I would never play an army that I do not like the lore to. If I don't like reading about them, I'm not going to play them. Because I do read more than I play the game, and I don't really have anyone to play fantasy with. So it's mostly me just collecting an army to look at. So, um, the lore itself. I like ogres because they're so, well, malleable, I, I think is a good word for them. They're neither good nor evil. They're not in, you know, the big fight against chaos. They're not trying to invade the empire. They're just there. They can work for chaos. They can work for humans. They even make deals with orcs. And <clears throat> dwarves and whatever else. They just, they just hang out. And I like that. They are a big enough impact on the world to warrant an army. And I do believe that, because an ogre army coming towards any village, any town, any city, is enough to raise alarm. Also, they now they do work as mercenaries for pretty much anyone who is willing to pay for them. And be that in huge amounts of food, weapons, or, um, well, gold if the tribe knows how to money. Now, they don't always know how to money. That, that tends to be a problem, especially if the ogres are raiding somewhere, and where they're raiding doesn't really have food. Now, uh, I... I'm trying to think of other things to say here. They're big, they're dumb, but not dumb enough to where they can't you know, fire a gun, and they're freaking scary, which is uh, very odd for me, because I tend to play the weaker, I, I tend to play the much weaker thing. Uh, when I was planning on doing Lizardmen, I was actually planning on running an all-skink army. Now that I have ogres, it's really hard for me not to, you know, run an all Noblar army. And I do hope I'm pronouncing that right, I've, I've never heard it pronounced in the open, and I've always read it as Noblar, the little green skins that follow the, uh, the ogres around. The cousins to goblins. They're adorable. I love them. Uh, don't get me wrong, there's going to be a lot in my army. A lot of Noblars. Not too much. I still need ogres. By the way, I, uh, I was putting those, uh, Mornfang models together, and I, uh, got the, I got the ogre torsos out. Their nipples are sharp. Is that... Is that just my models, or do ogres just have really sharp dagger nipples? If so, fantastic. Thank you, uh, Games Workshop, for them them sharp, pointy nipples. Oh, um, more about the ogre lore itself. I actually do like the Great Maw. I, I like the idea of it. I like the idea of this gigantic meteorite with teeth slant, or... Actually, this is a freaking asteroid, massive thing, uh, slamming into the Warhammer world and just kind of burrowing itself in. When I first read about this uh, a few years ago, I thought it was Tyranids, if uh, you're a fan of 40k. It, it sounds like a Tyranid bioship to me. Big thing with teeth, slams into a place, doesn't really die, it is alive, it is a living celestial body. Um... And there's also this little, little tiny bit of uh, lore about it, saying that there are razor-limbed insects surrounding the Great Maw. That's... it. And then, you know, ogres have an insatiable hunger, they want to feed, they want to eat, you know, biomass. I originally thought that this was like a gene-stealer cult in fantasy. And, uh... Hey, it could be. I mean, the end times, if the ogres get a book or if they get a big part in a book. I, I know the uh, 
the volcano god thing is going to play a big part in the end times, or maybe not a big part, but it's going to be there. Uh, but I would like more lore on the uh, on the Great Maw. That would be fantastic. I would like to read more about that, and I mean. Whatever it is, it's strong enough to fuel the butchers and slaughter masters' magic. Now, fantasy is one of those is one of those worlds to where if you do believe in something, or enough people do, it does become real. It does become a god. You see this in the human gods and uh, many of the other gods within the setting. So, this could just be gaining power from the ogres worshiping it, but it also could be powerful enough in itself to grant psychic powers. That's that's awesome. Either way, it's cool. I love it. Uh, oh, hey, a uh, bit of lore I read last night on the creation of ogres. There are two big theories here, and one's by uh, you know high elves, the other one's by humans. And I know the high elves are probably correct because they've been around long, and humans are humans. But I like the human one better. I like the human one a lot better. And uh, the high the high elf one simply states they were created by the old ones to help fight the uh, you know the coming of chaos, and uh, you know the high elves don't like them very much. That's pretty much all it says there. The human one goes on to say that they might be a mutant uh, branch of halfling, or just very closely related. The species, the two of them, they get along very well. They both have uh, you know. An oral fixation. They they love to eat. They uh, halflings more with the cooking, and the ogres more with the raw. I killed this. I'm going to stuff it in my mouth. Uh, well, <laughs> ogres and halflings could be related. Fact, and it's a fact that I would like to be even more of a fact. I want it to be true. I want ogres and halflings to be bros and cousins and what have you. Anyways, that is pretty much it on ogres. I mean, they are my choice, uh, my go-to choice in fantasy now. Uh, out, out of everything, I was actually a little surprised with myself. I went to uh, my local game store. It's, it's called the Battle Zone. It's got a big old orc skull. Uh, uh, I like it. Anyways, I went there and... Uh, I saw the Mornfang Cavalry, and I saw the, uh, the this. I saw the this. And I thought, hey, I have money from Christmas. I'm going to buy that. And I did. And I'm not, I'm not dissatisfied. I can't wait till uh, my regiment gets here, and I'm going to have ogres. My next purchase is probably going to be two packs of Noblars and, uh, Whatever leader unit I decide to get, probably going to be a Slaughtermaster. Those things are cool. Uh, oh yeah, by, by the way, I wanted to start this video by saying that I recently went through surgery. I'm in immense pain all the time, and I'll probably be better in about three weeks. Good three week time. That's not too bad, right? Uh, I do have stitches in my butt, and I'll be going back to work in about three weeks. Stitches are coming out in two. Doctor said I should probably still keep my ass down and not do much. In that time, I'm probably just going to be on the internet. I know you you may have seen the uh, post I made on Tumblr uh, requesting asks and what have you, but... Uh, Tumblr moves a lot slower than I remember. I, I need to follow more people, it seems. Oh yeah, but do not get me wrong, I may... Actually, I don't think I sound too enthused right now, but I seem normal, but just sitting like this... I, it is it is pain. It is bad, and uh, I cannot wait for this to, uh, to be done. Hey, thanks for watching my nonsense on ogres. Thank you for the question. I appreciate it. And uh, yes... I do. I love the ogre lore. I love that they're. I love that they can do anything in the Warhammer world. It, it's awesome. Not many armies are able to just. 
not many armies are able to just get out of the this is good and this is evil category. Ogres are just so neutral. They're the most neutral army I have ever come across, and I love it. Games Workshop, thank you for doing this to, uh, to ogres. Uh, thank you for making them playable, and thank you for making them big chubby those. Big chubby those. I love them. And now I'm going to lay down because this is uh, this is really hurting. Thanks for watching, yo.